It's kind of funny to think about photography as a private thing, especially in this day and age when due to social media and the internet, we tend to share our photographs with so many people, with strangers, with the whole world. But it wasn't always like that, and we kind of forget that. But that's one of the other things I like about having this treasure chest of images, of prints, physical prints, is it is private and it is very selective as to who gets to see it. Um, I think there's something invaluable about the idea that photography can be a private thing. It is a private form of creativity that we can do to satisfy just ourselves and nobody else. Well, good day. This is Joe Van Cleve, and I have a note stuck to the monitor of my computer that reminds me of the last time I did a backup of my main hard drive. And the reason why that note is there is because I've lost pictures before, digital files, through either improper backups or simply not doing them in a timely fashion. And this is one of the things that we have to live with in this brave new world of digital photography that's really not so new anymore, right? I have shoe boxes in my closet full of photographic negatives and prints uh, from film cameras. Um, and those things take up room, that's true. But they're there, barring flood and fire, the damages that can come with physical objects in the physical world. But I didn't have this, the equivalent physical backups of my digital files for a long time. I, I really didn't print many of them. Almost all the time that I uh, enjoyed those photographic images was on a computer screen or on my iPad or whatever, on a tablet of some kind. I started printing some, having some books made. I started making my own little phot photography books through Blurb. A few of them I've done, maybe three or four. Uh, but those are kind of longer projects. They're a little harder to do. It requires a lot of work. But I was looking for a way to be able to get my digital files and move them into the real world as photographs. And what I started doing a few years ago is I started having my digital files printed as four by six or roughly that kind of a snapshot size uh, image at my local photo lab, which in Albuquerque is picture perfect. And uh, then I started doing this more and more. I would go, if I had a whole memory card full of pictures, I would go through edit all of them, call them down to my favorites, put them on a thumb drive, take them up to my lab, and have them print them. And I started doing it more and more, and then I decided, well, you know, I have all these prints I've have made, and I still have them stuck in envelopes and shoe boxes. What I really need is a way for those physical prints to be a little bit more organized and accessible well, you know, you can take uh, one of those shoe boxes or photo video picture boxes that you find at the craft stores. You can take those and uh, you can store them in your closet. You can store them under the bed in a, in a, you know, up in the shelf somewhere. But you really need it out where people will see it and access it and you're more likely to, to look at it. And so I decided, well, yeah, I could just leave them on in the living room or somewhere on a shelf, on a table, but having a cardboard box like that isn't really as nice to look at. So I went to my local craft store and I found a decorator box that is a little bit more uh, like decor to put my box, my photos in. And so I have this treasure chest box full of my favorite digital photographs. And this is the little treasure chest <clears throat> that I keep sitting in my, uh, either my patio room here or my living room. But uh, this is the repository of 
a lot of my most favorite digital photographs. And <clears throat> I have them organized by which camera they were shot with and what format they were uh, in terms of aspect ratio. So we have the Lumix G5 3 to 2 aspect ratio, which is a whole bunch of them here. We have the also some uh, number of photographs that were square format with the Lumix G5, and then the native 4 thirds format. And then we have the Fuji X10 in 3 to 2, square format, and 4x3. So I'm just going to run through here and, uh, you know, I have a whole bunch of photographs. I mean, some of this stuff I really, really think is interesting. It's not the kind of photographs that you would put in a family album. This is the back of Kurt's camera corral that's no longer in business. <clears throat> A lot of these are documentary photography, I would say, or urban documentary. My favorite photographs that I've taken. Now, an interesting thing about some of these is that, let's go to the square format, for instance. Um, on the back of a lot of these photographs, is the file number, the actual digital file number. So if I want to find the digital file on my archived hard drives of this picture, I can take that file number and I can do a search on my computer for that file number and I can find the digital file. And I really like uh, using this matte finish paper. It's easier to view it without a lot of glare even though it may not have quite as much sharpness as a um, glossy print. But uh, I like these five inch square square format images. And they're not all necessarily people stuff. I mean I like this kind of documentary work here. But it's hard not to take photos of the grandkids. Oh here's one. This is some storefront downtown Albuquerque. Yeah, a lot of this um, urban documentary stuff I really love. And I like the um, Panasonic Micro Four Thirds cameras and lenses for this kind of work. I find uh, they're a good combination between resolution, sharpness, and having wide depth of focus. Because sometimes with documentary photography, you actually want a fairly wide depth of focus. You don't want everything shot at f1.2 just because you can. It's nice to have things in focus, especially when you're trying to document stuff. How do you document something when everything is out of focus? You need to... Uh, you need these images <clears throat> to describe, to visually describe for the viewer um, what they're about. So, oh yes, some nighttime photography. So yes, I, I really love being able to open this treasure chest and thumb through these photographs without having to pull them up on a computer, search for them 
on a hard drive somewhere. Look at them on a screen. I like the fact that they're paper, they're physical. And a lot of these photos aren't necessarily of other areas out and about. This one is in my man cave shed at my backyard. It's the pachinko machine. I just love the <clears throat> the details of the 1970s or whatever Japanese styling. And uh, things, simple mundane everyday things like my little metal yard ornament in my backyard. You don't have to go <clears throat> far and wide afield to find photographs. Um, they're everywhere. <clears throat> here's a here's a sign down in Knob Hill. This shot was taken from my car and it's a media arts school they put some kind of interesting photography up on their their billboard but my little mirror the side mirror of my car and everything and the fact that you can see my hand holding the camera up to my face in the mirror <clears throat> self-referential um, go to the local flea market there's pictures everywhere and I love uh, being able to have access to these in paper format it's just a, a wonderful thing. This is when we were having our patio room, where we're sitting right now, converted from the back porch that it used to be. And during the construction phase, they had the window opening taped up with uh, uh, visqueen plastic. And this was a shot taken from outside with my grandson uh, lit from inside. I thought it was pretty cool. But this is a documentary photo of, not, and not only is it kind of artistic, but it's a documentary photo of this project of ours. So it's nice having this on paper. And every one of these photos has a certain meaning, like this photo was captured in manual focus mode on the Lumix G5. Downtown Albuquerque, and I actually manually focused on this butterfly in flight, and I think this was maybe taken with my uh, Minolta, one of my Minolta lenses, probably the 24 millimeter or maybe the 50 millimeter, anyways, probably the 24 millimeter Minolta lens, manual focus lens. Pretty lucky there, but pretty cool. I remember that day. And my favorite coffee shop, Winning Coffee. There's always some kind of a scene. That's photographic bowl. And the uh, public, what do you might call sticker art, people plastering all kinds of stickers and stuff on light poles. That's always a common motif in my photography. And I like the juxtaposition of words within images. Call us and for lease. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Those words take on additional meanings when you put them in the context of a photograph. And this is a uh, mausoleum with niches with people's cremains and an advertising billboard for, for tires looming overhead. I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. So this is my little box of treasures, photographic treasures that um, I enjoy so much going through. You know, some of these prints 
um, are the only remaining evidence of some of these photographs because I have a hard drive that failed and uh, wasn't properly backed up and so some of these photographs do not exist anywhere else except right here as prints. So I think uh, I think it's important to yeah, archive your hard drives, back up your hard drives like you should, do your data backup, but I think it's important to print your pictures, to look at them as photographs, writing with light, because that's really the final step of the photographic process, is seeing them as a print. And... Uh, No trespassing aliens will get you. That was down in Marfa, Texas, at the uh, Marfa Lights viewing area. Anyways, I will leave you with these last few images from Marfa, Texas, from my treasure chest of prints. Physical, paper, tangible, real photographs. I really think it's important that we print our digital images and have physical prints to hold in our hand and to look at and to share. Um, I think it completes the photographic process to be able to hold a photograph in your hand as a physical object. I think it's wonderful to be able to see photographs you know, on your phone or on your tablet or computer, but I think seeing physical prints in hand is is even more important. One of the things you'll notice uh, when you're looking at physical prints from digital files, especially prints that are not super big in size, you'll notice that all the little niggling technical things that we fixate about in terms of resolution and um, lens quality and you know all the, pi the pixel peeping kind of minutia of detail, you don't really see all that. Uh, you don't really notice it. On a print, 4x6 or so, 5 inch square in size, you really can't hardly tell the difference uh, handheld at that size. And so what the print, what the snapshot print to me means is, uh, first of all, the image has to be important enough to print. You don't want to print 200 images of just random junk. They have to be worth it. Uh, it's going to cost you 40 or 50 cents per print uh, at the 4x6 size roughly. That's usually what it costs at a photo lab to have them printed. So it's going to cost you a little bit of money for each one of these images to print. So you're kind of investing a little bit into each one. You're saying, you know what, this is good enough. Not only do I want to archive it in some physical form format, aside from the digital hard drive backups that we're supposed to be doing. Not only that, but I'm investing money in this physical object, so it better be worth something. Uh, there, there should be some kind of a subject matter in that print that is worth holding in your hand and worth looking. And so it kind of raises the bar a little bit. It helps us to call out and edit our work and be a little bit more selective in what we think is good and what we think is bad. Is it really worth printing and putting in that treasure chest box? So I think this is important for all of us photographers to have a treasure chest box of physical prints to go through. It's a private thing. It's a personal thing. This little box I have in my home, it doesn't get seen by everybody. You have to come in to the house as company or family or friends and you have to get to know me and then there's the box go ahead and go through it and look at the work that I've done but it's an intimate private thing 
but it's nice to have. It means a lot. It really is a treasure chest. It is a treasure of photographic images, photographic treasures. And really is the ultimate uh, value, I guess, of my photography as an amateur photographer is that work that is in that box. Uh, that's the culmination of it. And so I would encourage you guys to print your images, get them printed in snapshot form. And by the way, all of these prints I have in that box are all RA4 color prints. They're not inkjet prints. They're, they're real color photographic prints, which means if stored properly, they should last for a long, long time. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve, and I'm encouraging you guys to print your digital pictures, get them in physical format, put them in a treasure chest box where you can keep that box as decor in your house, in your living situation, and go back and look at it periodically and share it with others. Until next time, you have yourselves a great day.